Welcome to Lifestyle Strength, your guide to mastering health and well-being in the real world. I'm Ariel, a massage therapist with over a decade of experience in holistic health. And I'm here with Lucas, a seasoned fitness coach who's transformed the lives of hundreds in Northwest Arkansas. We're here to share real stories and expert insights about embracing a healthy lifestyle while balancing the everyday hustle. Join us as we explore practical ways to achieve wellness and thrive amidst life's challenges. Let's dive in. Hey, y'all. Welcome back. We are joined today by Calvin Henderson, also known as Mr. Hot Sauce. Hi, Sizzle. How's it going, man? I am blessed. How you doing, Ariel? I'm doing well. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, guys, for Absol- having me on the show. Absolutely. So I'm sure maybe you have heard a little bit on our podcast about health, wellness, fitness, and being one of my clients for so long and an athlete, pro athlete, uh, I was really excited to have you on the show. And I would love to kind of get your backstory on what you do, because not too many people know much about boxing For sure. or even where it started, how it is, that kind of thing. For sure. So when I was young, we laughed. No, I'm missing. Um, so boxing, going back to the history of boxing, boxing is one of the oldest sports in the history of just sports in general. So you got boxing, you got wrestling. And so when I tell people when they come to the gym for the first time, they so focus on trying to master it in like two weeks in a month. Mm. There's no way you can master something that's been around for that long in a month, even a year, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'm in boxing for 18 years now, wow. and I'm still fine-tuning and figuring out and perfecting my craft to this day. So it's never going to be something where I got it all figured out. Once I do, I'm moving on to something else. And so boxing is is, is, is amazing in my eyes because, like I said, there's so much stuff you can dive into, different styles, different weight classes, different periods, different rules, different everything. As far as me, my boxing career started when I was 15 years old, back in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, I went to a gym. I had to convince my parents to let me go. My mom didn't want me to box at all. My dad thought I was going to be like, why would I leave with Parkinson's? And my mom thought I was too pretty to box. And my grandma thought I was going to have an <laughs> asthma attack in the ring and die. So I had to do a lot of convincing. And so back then, we had a old mattress in my garage. And I would go out there and just beat the shit out the mattress, just what I thought boxing was. And finally, one day, my mom was taking out, like, I don't know, clothes or a trash bag or something. She seen me. She's like, boy, you for real, ain't you? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, okay, next week I'm going to take you. So I went to a boxing gym, and I fell in love the first day. I mean, I mean, from the technique, from the footwork to the stance. And the every coach there, every fighter there always asked me the first week, how long you been boxing, man? I'm like, it's my first song. I'm like, what? Like, yeah, it's my first song. And so that's the segue. But segue, years later, I found out when I'm 22 years old, I'm adopted, right? I had no idea. And when I found out I was adopted, my biological mom told me that my biological dad and my uncles and my cousins was all either professional boxers or amateur boxers. Whoa. I had no idea. So it was just destiny in the blood. Yeah, yeah, it was in me. Like the young cat said, it's not on me, it's in me. It is literally in my blood and my DNA is what we do. And so just knowing that, it just man, it fueled the fire even more. Keep it going. Well, I got a question. So since you were just you perceived boxing in your basement as just like going hard and like hitting this mattress, how did that evolve? Like when you went to the gym where you're like, oh, there's so much more technique. Because side, side note, I have done six months of one-on-one <laughs> oh, yeah. training in your gym, and it is so much footwork. There's so much That's cardio, awesome. so much um, – I mean, it – it's a a craft. Like mm-hmm. you were saying, like it's not something that you'll probably ever completely get. For sure. Um, so how did that look going into a gym where you're like, oh, this is gives me a completely different view? Great question. So what I didn't say is that in between me hitting the mattress to going to the gym, I was at Walmart and I seen like a beginner intro to boxing DVD. I like beg my mom, like, wow, give me this, give me this. You know I want to buy it, but give me this. So I popped it in. So I kind of knew a little bit of the basics, but mm-hmm. what much you can learn from a DVD video and just the stance and what the jab, what the two is. So I kind of had an idea like this ain't nothing you play with. Right. You know, I went to the gym and seeing all the fighters and everybody doing their thing and the coaches. This made me want to fall in love more with it. I wasn't necessarily intimidated by it. I was more so like, this is where I need to be. And I felt this sense of like, oh, like, this is my shit. Cause I, I don't play football. I play basketball. I did baseball. I did powerlifting. Mm-hmm. I did all that stuff. Yeah. And I went to the boxing gym. It was like, nah, this is this is your calling. It, it's, I say it now because I know, but I didn't know back then. I just knew that I felt home and I felt like this is what I 
do better than anybody in my peers. None of my friends box, none yeah. of my family box that I knew of at the time. You know, something I can call my own, I can actually grow on. So it was actually motivating. It's kind of crazy in the moment, like especially if you're young, you know, where you, you walk into somewhere and you don't logically recognize that that is like your place. Like yeah. That's where you're mm-hmm. supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. But you feel it. That's feel true. It. And you that, feel I think it. that's the thing mm-hmm. that we do as kids that we don't do as adults so much is that's that real. we try to outthink our way as adults, whether it's make an excuse or try to like mm-hmm. do it when the time is right or when oh, yeah. we feel our best. That's true. Whereas kids, we just... We feel it. And we, we just know, feel yeah. it. And we go. Yep. You Ooh, know, that is so Those true. Just, oh yeah, you should go with and it. And it's just crazy that inevitably you end up finding out, like it's literally in your blood, and For that's sure. why you felt it. You were like, "This is my place. I've done all these other sports, but this is where I need to be." For sure. I know. At the time. I took it somewhat offensive because at that but that time I worked my ass off for my crowd. And so the way she kinda broke it down to me was almost like, Well, this is why you're so good, because yeah, you're natural at it. Like, no, I'm like, well, I worked my ass off with right. that shit. Once I took a step back, mm-hmm. so I like, I mean, it, it didn't make me worse that my that my it's in my DNA, you know what I mean? I still worked hard, I still did anything to do to make it happen, but of course sometimes you're just natural at. Right. And fighting is one of those things. <laughs> so it helped. I think uh, that makes me think a lot of times you'll hear people say, you know, if you and I think we talked about it previously on a podcast that, you know, the ones who work hard will inevitably the hard workers will outwork the naturally talented people Mm -hmm. ultimately. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so in this case, you're just saying, well, I kind of had both, but you definitely I've never I first of all, I didn't know that, but I would never sit here and just say like. Oh, oh, Calvin's just naturally talented. When he steps in the ring, he does no work. He just can do it. Um, Because I see you day in and day out hustling, man, hustling every day. You never quit. So that makes me think over the years, kind of seeing you evolve and grow in the sport. That's that's something to to kind of harp on that is that being a professional athlete, I've learned that it's not just about talent. It's not even just about your work ethic. It also goes back to timing, mm-hmm. right? You can have all the right tools, the right mindset, the right positivity, and the right grind, the right everything. In the wrong time, mm-hmm. you're still nobody. Mm-hmm. And, and, Floyd, and Floyd Mayweather, how hard does he work? How great is he? If he grew up in the area with Sugar Ray Leonard and Robert Durden and Rand, he'd just be another beloved fighter. Nobody was talking about him, none of that. So timing is also a huge role. That's something we can't even control, right? We can't control right. where we're born. Getting control of everybody no. else, what they're doing mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah. So it's not fair, but it's life. So would you say, like, if you had to go back and encourage or congratulate your younger self um, on, like, what benefits have you, like, seen over time now? And it's crazy. Like, has this been beneficial? Like, if you looked at a younger you, would you say, man, I'm so happy you felt like this was your place and this was your calling. Oh, hell yeah. And you, have you seen that <laughs> evolve and been beneficial? Like you Most already just definitely. said, kind of timing really yeah. plays in into it the most. Most really. definitely. So <clears throat> a lot of people don't know that my backstory, a little bit of backstory, I went to the University of Arkansas. That's why I'm even in Arkansas in the first place. I'm from Texas. Got a, a full amount of scholarship for music education. Mm. So I, you can't get a scholarship in boxing, at least not in Arkansas. Mm. So I came here. I was already boxing. I want to turn pro right out of high school. But my mom was like, well, hell no. You gonna go to college now, get your degree, and at least something you can fall back on. So I went to college with a fallback degree. I still don't want the box. I didn't know how I was going to make it happen. I went to school on a music education degree. I finished it. I even made plans to go back to start teaching drum lines in Texas. And so it goes back to the opportunity. So my last semester, I'm doing drum line auditions for a local high school. I'm going to say the high school. A local high school here. I know the high school. <laughs> yeah, and then... <laughs> And then the guy that was retiring in the next two years was there doing it with me, doing doing auditions. And he was like, Calvin, you know, you got a bright future ahead of you, man. I know you like boxing, but um, you're about to get married. You already got one child. I think it's time for you to get a real job, man. I think boxing, you put that to the side. I mean, well, I bet that fueled you, man. You know, you know, I looked at him. <laughs> and I told him, I almost said the name. I was like, I looked at him, I said, sir, I'm just like, sir, sir, I got my whole life to be a music director. You know what I mean? I can... I can teach music since I'm 86 years old. I said, boxing has this small window. Yes. Small window. And so I'm going to max this shit out, see where it takes me. If it don't work, hell, I'm coming back. Yeah, I'm going to teach drum all day. But I'm not living my life with regrets. You know, so many people are so focused on 
Well, the young cat said, get into the bag now. I go to college, get a good job, to pay for college. I get married, I have kids. Like this. The safe. Yeah, the safe, the, the safe route. But the safe route will get you to the top. I can't tell you how many right now, people who take the safer route, when he gets about 35 to 40 years old, they're having what's called midlife crisis now. They're like, man, back in my day, I was good at baseball. I should have did this. I didn't want to live like that. I never want to use the word or terms, I used to box. No, right. I'm still boxing. I'm still fighting. Yeah. Still knocking motherfuckers out. You know what I mean? So I never, never look back to that. So I think I made a great choice now. So you think that was like credited, like this gratitude that you've obviously felt from pursuing a passion. You think it's a passion or you think it's boxing itself? And you think they just kind of go hand in hand with each other? Like I obviously, you love what you do. Of course. You right. definitely. So be, to be a professional athlete, no matter what sport it is, you have to have a passion for working out. A lot of these kids that I mentor, they think they want to be a professional football player, basketball player, but they're eating Takis and playing Madden on the, on the, on the, on the couch. Yeah. They need work. You have to love working out. Working out is a part of your job. Yeah. I work out every day. The But why? I work out. There's not a day off. My day off is a three-mile run, and I go to Hot Works, shout out to Hot Works, and do, <laughs> do a sauna session. That's my recovery yeah. day. Right? There is no, I'm going to just sit back and do nothing. No, working out is my job. Mm-hmm. Never have a part-time doctor or a part-time lawyer. Well, I'll be a part-time boxer. Ooh, and so that's I, true. it had to be passion. But you also got to have direction, too. All these cats, they, a lot of these cats I talk to, I'm like, they want to be professional NBA player, right? I said, why are you going to do it? I'm, I'm going to work hard. I said, if I give you a shovel until you go outside and dig a dirt, that's hard work, ain't it? How's it going to make you better at your goal? You got to have specific direction and goals to reach your goals. Mm, yeah. that's, so, that's so true. Wow. Yeah. I... I, I, I think it's so talking. great when we have guests because it just like fuels. We And he knows. He's like getting amped up yes. about it. And I'm like, man, this is what yes. I like. It's, it's the passion. <laughs> and then also it, it makes my little head like that Boom. exploding emoji. <laughs> like, oh, I need that. You know, yes, and that yeah. stuff's it's so contagious. That passion that fuels you. And then you look back and you have so much gratitude because you're not looking back regretting. I meant that. And that's anything that has to be a sport. It can be whatever career for you. You want to be the best light bulb changer out there. Mm-hmm. Have a passion for it. Have a, have a direction yeah. for it and make it happen. You don't have to be a professional athlete to make money out here. Mm-hmm. I think it's too, like, you know, on the fitness side of things, you know, you're talking about working out being part of your job. Is, uh, I think most people don't connect the dots there. Because, like, obviously, like, when you're an athlete, like, you're going to have to be strong, <laughs> fast, like, have endurance. Like, yeah. it's it's a logical for just the average Joe to be like, well, of course they got to work out. It's, it's their job, right? Yeah. They're getting paid yeah. to work out. And really, whether you're the light bulb changer or you're a roofer or you're a lawyer, you're yeah. working a desk job, it's like, well, it's still like, do you realize how much better you would be at your oh, job sure. if you just worked out a little that's bit? Right? Yeah, like, right. You know, it's a little harder to connect the dots there. So I, I feel like that's why so many people put that to the wayside because they think like, well, I got to work to make money or I got to work mm-hmm. to you know, secure the home for the family, like for all those things that they got in their lives and they don't really connect the dots with something like exercise and the recovery. But like, you know, you just said it, like to be the best boxer, you yeah. got to use training. If, if, if you can just own that fact that if you want to be the best lawyer, you want to be the mm-hmm. best wife or husband or yeah. partner, mm-hmm. like you should include that as that's part of what you're doing. And yeah. it's also go back to longevity too. I also think I preach longevity. So if I want to be a doctor for a long time, I can't be a doctor and be high blood sugar, high cholesterol and stuff, right? So right. being in shape helps me in my other career too, stay longer than that. Yeah. Right. And people want always like the ideal of working out as a living until you got to miss birthdays, until you got to miss your kids before mm. a football game, until you got to miss this wedding. No, you know, I can't. I'm in the gym at 5 a.m. I can't go to this party. I can't go this, to this event my child is having because I'm in the gym getting ready for this event. So it sounds good to work out for a living. Mm-hmm. So you can miss the things you feel like is important for that job. Man, that's the sacrifice you pay Amen. for what you're, what you're Amen. more. Amen, brother, man. Yeah, I have a, a, that makes me think I have a marathon runner and he always complains. It's, it's the funniest thing because kind of what Lucas is saying, you know, we kind of chalk it up. If you're an athlete, well, naturally you have to work out. Like, of course that that's what makes you, you know, it's the adult logical brain again. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But then like, if you add the longevity portion and also just maybe not being a hypocrite, yeah. Depending on your job, yeah, call them out. You, you you really want to make sure you have that as part of your life. But like you said, there are some drawbacks because my marathon runner, he's the only one. He's just very brutally honest, like myself, and he'll be like, 
I just, I don't want to go to this destination wedding. I don't want to do this and this. And I'm like, well, why don't you want to? He's like, it's not that I don't enjoy hanging out with friends. He's like, I don't drink and I train. Mm. And this is coming in between me needing to train. And because people don't live my lifestyle, they don't understand. understand. And they feel like I am intentionally creating Mm. separation from myself to them. Because I need to make sure this is a priority in my oh, life. Oh, that's huge. That's yeah. huge. I had a guy like that. Not to cut you off, I apologize. I had a guy at the gym. He invited me and a couple of other boxers over to his house to some event, watch a game or Fourth of July or something. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, nah, man, I got I to I watch what I eat because I got a fight coming up. They're like, you box, you guys are so prima donna about what you're eating. And I, I said, so I stop. I said, let me just paint a picture for you, All right? We go into a room full of people with video cameras and audio recorders. Strip down naked sometimes, step on a scale, and then yell out how much you weigh in front of the entire room within here. How would you feel about your weight and what you eat then? Because mm-hmm. if you one pound over, mm-hmm. you label as fat. You can be 168 pounds, which is not fat at all. You're in super right. shit, but you 169 pounds, are you a fat ass? You're right. not doing your job. And so we have a, a, something in boxing that is etched your mind at the young age is that if you don't make weight, you're losers. The weight, making weight, is the first part of the fight. Mark the way is part of your job. So it's like this, like almost like military training. You're always watching what you eat. Mm-hmm. How, how many calories is that? Oh, I can't eat that much. You know, I got to fight in two weeks. And so mm-hmm. it creates this like, this mindset. But a lot of people don't understand that. Like you said, that they would like, come hang out with the park, man. We got beer. We got this. Like, nah, I'm straight on it. Mm-hmm. Oh, you just think you're better than us, huh? No, this is my job. I go to your job and tell you what to do with your job. Right. This is my job, fam. Chill out. <laughs> it's just the difference is that it bleeds in. Yeah. It's so much more critical. Of, you know, it's like you're working 24 hours at that point. Exactly. No, right? Absolutely. Whereas most people go in, they clock in, they get their paycheck, they clock out, they're done. That's yes. what it is. You know, they try to separate it. Yes. But, like, that's what that's what lifestyle strength is, right? That's why, like, mm-hmm. if you if you look at it as, as one whole system, one whole thing, then just what you said, you're much more motivated, you're much more committed oh, yeah. to making the the better decision towards yeah, whatever yeah. goals you set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you just said it right there, Luke, it's just lifestyle. Professional athlete is not just a job; it's a lifestyle. Yeah. You have to live like man. I can't tell you. I be at Walmart, right? I have a, I have a wife and kids, and so I be at Walmart with my grocery shopping cart, and I have a Pepsi in my cart. And somebody like, "Hey, Jim, what you doing with that?" He was, "Wait, what? You know what I mean?" <laughs> like, I'm not at the gym. I said, "Even for me, it's my wife." You know what I mean? Yeah. You get a Pepsi channel, what kind of channel? It's so it's it's twenty four seven. 24-7. If I go to the gym, I'm also a personal trainer too and a fitness trainer. Yeah. If I go to the gym and I'm looking all out of shape and fat and droopy and stuff, how am I going to teach somebody else about their lifestyle and what they're eating? So like that? I'm looking like Professor Clump or Dr. Seuss. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, like, I, mean, like, I had to live the part too, right? Yeah. No, like an athlete. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we definitely, in my practice, we talk about that a lot. You know, the part. just you, the, the idea here is, you know, we don't want to be hypocrites, right? If we're selling, I say selling air quotes here because this is a lifestyle if we're talking about recovery, then we need to be doing it too, yep. right? If we're talking about fitness, we need to be living that lifestyle too. And the cool thing about integrating it into a lifestyle is that no matter what phase of life you are in, you've already created those foundations. Mm. Being pregnant, like we were talking earlier before mm. this, mm. it's already integrated into my life. I'm still working out. Yes, I made modifications, but that foundation is still there because my lifestyle doesn't change. Yeah. You know, just the phases of my life do. Yeah, and it means that I have to mold with that, but it doesn't mean I just quit. It's real. Right? Yeah. It's, it's like, uh, you know, it's the difference between like the tactics and those those foundations. We get so caught up with like the tactics of how we do things when the re- the reality is, is that like, how we do anything is how we do everything. Mm. Yes. Right? Ooh. So, like, you know, if you're going in and clocking in and doing your job, that's fine. You're probably doing some specific things that only you know how to do in your job to play your role, whatever it is you need to do. But you're still using the same principles of discipline and consistency oh, yeah. and right. managing the time so you can do those things. So however you choose to be a healthy person because we're all athletes yeah. when it's all said and done some of us get paid for it some of us don't yeah whether you do it boxing whether you do it wrestling whether you lift weights whether mm-hmm. you run whether mm-hmm. you do you bike yeah you yeah. know like you do yoga you train however you've been training pregnant like it's, it's <laughs> all the same yeah. it's just how you choose to do it might slightly differ but it's still the same thing right yeah, yeah once you got that foundation it's it's applicable everywhere so I told you before Uh-oh. this, I was like, mm, I have been like 
and I was looking at uh, looking at it last night just because I was so curious. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want your perspective on this, talking about like phases of life and evolving even as a boxer and kind of being put in the spotlight. And I know we've talked a little bit about how boxing can be a little bit political, but mm-hmm. I want to talk more on the front of uh, – kind of your window of opportunity and that makes me think a lot of mike tyson and uh paul yeah and what the fight coming up and just their different ages their different history of how long they've been boxing and i want kind of your perspective because you know you're you're in a gym Mm. coaching people every day so some of them are looking at what is it uh, is it Jake, Jake Paul? Paul yeah. Jake Paul, uh-huh. and then they're looking at Mike Tyson, right? And they're being like, "Oh, I could just be a Jake Paul." All right. And or <laughs> or you got these older guys in the gym being like, "Boy, you don't know what you're talking about." Yeah. It's Mike Tyson all the way. So I just want to hear like your dynamic uh, sure. kind of involvement uh, as far as like how you train and how you see people perceiving these kind of athletes. For sure, and so this is a quick little side story. So before, as you know, I was in camp with Jay Paul in Dubai last year. Yes. He hired me to be my sparring partner out there. He had a fight against a guy named Tommy Fury in Saudi Arabia. And so he had training camp in Dubai. So I was up there for three weeks and being this, I mean, getting all right. And so, <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I'm talking about Jay Paul. Before I went out there to spar with Jay Paul, I didn't know. You know, to the outside, he's a YouTuber. Mm-hmm. And now commits to boxing. Some people said they're disrespectful to the sport. So I didn't have any kind of yay or nay towards him. So I go mm-hmm. out there and I spar him. And I see, not from the spar, but just see how locked in he is into the crowd. Like we just talked about, it's mm-hmm. his lifestyle. So even though he's a YouTuber slash boxer, when he's in his boxing phase and boxing training account, mm-hmm. he's not doing no YouTube videos. He's not playing. Yeah. He's not climbing. He's not doing pranks. Right. He's not doing none of that shit. Like he is literally locked in the box. He wakes up. He does his training, he does his run, he does his recovery, he spars, he has everything a boxer would do mm-hmm. in a training camp. Now, does he have the advantages because he has a lot more money than young, young boxers do? Hell yeah. Right. So he can afford to have training camp in Dubai and have the best nutritionists and the best right. whatever supplements, whatever it is to take to be top of your game, but he still has to put the work in. Yeah. And so I respect more so for him being what he is financially, still making those sacrifices to get punched in the face. Mm. I'm sitting right now getting punched in the face. Yeah, I was saying getting punched in the face is not fun at all. And I'm doing this shit for 18 years. Getting punched in the face is not. If I could be great, anything else, I would not be doing boxing, guaranteed. (laughs) That shit's real, you know what I mean? And so for him making a choice to dive into a sport that's so violent, even though he's already rich, my ass off to that, just off off the roof. Now, is he, when I sparred him, he's only been boxing at that time, maybe three years. And so he's way far advanced than anybody I've met in three years, but also, of course, he has the tools to advance that. Yeah, pay for that advance. Of course, yeah. Now, go back to what the question you asked. Mike Tyson is Mike Tyson, but he's also 58 years old. Mm-hmm. And so we all know he's a window. We talk about professional sports. Mm-hmm. Even though he's older, the last thing that leads a fighter is his power. The speed, the reflexes, the conditioning, all this stuff goes away. The last thing that leads is a power. But that being said, Oh, last thing that leaves last is thing the power? Leaves the power. That's the last thing that leaves. Do we know anything oh, yeah. about Mike Tyson? <laughs> yeah, not exactly. all power. But with that being said, he has to land the power, too. Mm-hmm. So I don't see Jay Paul standing there letting Mike Tyson beat on him like that. No. I see him moving his feet, using mm-hmm. his jab, and trying to use his distance to make Mike Tyson miss. With that being said, if I'm Mike Tyson and I'm 58, and I don't have the same gas thing that I used to have when mm-hmm. I'm 20s, I would play the old man game. So I would go out there. And kind of make him burn his energy and kind of shoot his wide early on. Mm-hmm. Throw a lot of punches. I'm doing defense. I'm telling him, hold him, grab him, put my weight on him. And then waiting for the later rounds, try to catch his ass, knock his ass. Yeah, up. when he's getting tired. Because you get don't tired like and confident. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. A little more confident. Exactly. Confident. Exactly. 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 Because when you get fatigued, you're going to get tired. No matter how much you're trying, you're right. going to get tired. And so when you get tired, what technical stuff that you haven't been exposed to yet, creeps out. So mm-hmm. if I get tired, my chin starts going in the air. I get tired, my, drop, my hands start dropping me down. I should get exposed in the later rounds. So maybe my tie can take advantage of that in the later rounds. So. So, so would you, so going back to kind of like that hard work and like Mike Tyson lived this for so long for sure. versus Jake Paul just doesn't have years under his belt. Like, yeah, I sure. mean, that's just the reality of it. Yeah. At the end of the day, when each individual gets tired, 
I'm assuming Mike Tyson probably could still do this stuff in his sleep in the sense of repetition. So sometimes that pays off muscle memory of just like making sure you don't get lazy or, you know, like you're saying that fatigue sets in and then like maybe some of those flaws come out. Yeah. But that also too, uh, one person that was undefeated for the lights on his father's on all the time was undefeated. And so I remember how I used to be when I was in my twenties, like my speed, my reflexes, mm-hmm. even on recovery, right? Yeah. Like I'm aching right now. I'm gonna see my shoulders are hurting right now, just sitting here, right? So imagine that plus twenty eight more years on on top of that. Right. So it's some things that you cannot control, no matter how much you will yourself into getting in shape. Right. Your body's just not there anymore. Mm-hmm. And we know Mike Tyson back when he was young, he did hard drugs, he did hard alcohol, and he loved women. That's not a prolonged longevity mm-hmm. in the career. And so that could also play a factor too. What I'm saying is that I, I, I'm actually, I don't want to say excited, but it's going to be a good match. When I was sparring Jay Paul in the count, I'll put my hands on him. I'm also like 58 years old. Right. And so, can Mike Tyson lock him out? Hell yeah. Can Jay Paul kind of stay away and use his speed and his youth to kind of win the fight? Hell yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, I don't I don't see going either, either way. So, yeah. it's just going to be a fun fight. You think it's, all, you think it's a great time? time? It's going to be a fun or fight. Personally, I don't think, think it's going to if I had to lean towards anybody, I would say my Tyson. But I'm not betting no money on it. No. I definitely won't do that. Don't uh, bet yeah, you. No, no way. It's because he's like 50 years old, man. It's just like I said, man. You're going to see the Mike Tyson you guys used to see him when he's 20s. Mm-hmm. That was that was 30 some years ago. When were... How do you feel about just where boxing's at right now? Like, obviously, you've been in the sport a mm-hmm. long time. It it seemed to have changed over the last few years where, like, you got more celebrity type For sure. fights, right? Yeah. yeah. So, how do, you, how do you feel about that? You being niched into boxing and not like MMA or anything. So it's a little weird about boxing is that, so I'm currently the right number 10 in the world right now, right? And I don't, I don't put the work through when I was young, amateurs, to professionals, where it's out of on Showtime, mm-hmm. I don't follow ESPN, all these platforms. Mm-hmm. Boxing now, more so than it was back then, is about what the young cats call clout now, mm-hmm. right? How many Instagram followers do you have? How yeah. much how much social inf- influence do you have right. mm-hmm. on the members like Ryan Garcia, right? Those are the people that are putting in front of people now. So it's not necessarily can you fight. It's about how many tickets can you sell. Mm-hmm. Boxing kind of always kind of been about that. Professional boxing side kind of has always been about that. Mm-hmm. You got these guys kind of like me, like blue collar, who put the work in every fucking day. And they know once you put this product and get this product, I'm going to knock this guy ass out. Right. But like, nah, he don't have too many followers on Instagram, so we mm-hmm. don't give him an opportunity. So I see boxing now being more cloud chasing now. It's about... This person arguing on Twitter. They're fighting on Twitter. Oh, I want to see yeah. this fight. These young cats. Like, in the gym, my last fight, I told one of the guys in the gym, he's 20, 21 years old. He's like, what's his name? Usually, when I when I was growing up a little bit, we go to Google to search stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I'm all going straight to Instagram. Like, what's his Instagram? I'm like, oh, I don't know what Instagram is. Like, what the heck? I'm trying to fight him. Yeah. So, everything has shifted to social media now. So, if you haven't what they call motion on social media, you get the bigger fights. Yeah. So, yeah. is that why... Drop in on like what is next for you because I've been seeing some stuff oh, yeah. floating around social media. <laughs> oh yeah, and I'm curious. Is it, now you 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 talked about kind of the difference how boxing has changed a little bit with the clout versus like blue collar and just like putting the work in yeah. and being known. Yeah. So is there a thing in regards to boxing? Is it always been calling people out? To kind of like get them to come and fight you, in is sense, that or, or is it changed? You know, it's kind of like that. It's, it kind of been like that too. But back in the day, if I don't like this person, you know, like me, we'll fight. You don't have to. Go, well, let's, let's see how many Instagram followers you have. Does it make yeah. sense? Right. About right now, they wait till like, no, I don't like you. Let's fight now. Now, as you see, I mean, I gotta make. I switch my mindset. I'm an old school guy. I just want to talk with you. I'm gonna talk with my fist. I don't necessarily like the whole John back from the social media because yeah. if I can't put my hands on you, I'm not gonna argue with you. Right. But now I kind of had to switch it up. And so you can see some of my recent videos. I'm actually calling out a certain fighter right now named Skeletor Plant and trying to get him to accept the fight with me because that's what we got to do now. Yeah. Like, I don't want to get to the point to where I'm done fighting. Yeah. And I just then leave everything out on the table. Yeah. So instead of me just being quiet and waiting for stuff to happen, yeah. I'm going to run my mouth a little bit like the young cats are doing and see if I can <laughs> start the fight. Well, so, it's just like a business. Yeah. Oh, I mean, oh, that's part sure. of your business. That's what you got to do. Exactly. You're not going to love everything that you do in your business, but the oh. ones who evolve mm-hmm. are the ones that stick around exactly. and make the most. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Man. And it's kind of weird because, like I told you, I don't talk shit. Well, let me take that back. I do talk shit. I talk shit while I'm whooping your ass. Right? I don't do the talk shit in the pre and the lead up and shit. Right. I'm in the ring with you. I'm definitely talking shit too. Oh, yeah. And I see it every, every fight I've been to. I'm like, oh, 
I know I'm he's got you. He's got you saying stuff right there. But that's why I'm being your ass, right? right. Before, though, I just don't like it because it's just a, what I call booty chatter. It's just... When you, until we get into the rant, we're going to say we really talking shit then. Right. You know, I had to fight in Oklahoma. I think what she's talking about. Yeah, I started talking shit from round one to me. Because I went up two weight classes to fight this guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was just, a lot of people don't ever do this. Like, my opponent pulled out, like, two weeks switch. before the fight. And so I went up two weight classes to almost heavyweight to fight. I'm not a look, I'm not a heavyweight, bro. I don't give a fuck. So what? Glove him up. Let's yeah. go. And so he started out. First punch he threw. I caught it on my glove. He's like, what's wrong with hot sauce? It's different, ain't it? Yeah, it's different. I'm like, bitch, you're going to see how much different it is quick. <laughs> I mean, I ended the fight. I'm talking shit. They're like, come on, let's go, Tuan. Yeah. No, you the big guy, right? Yeah, come show me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but... And that's that's the I think that's the the best part being a spectator, but also getting to kind of be behind the scenes and seeing all the work that you put in. Oh, yeah. Like you said, like you don't really have to talk shit because you know know the work that you put in. Oh, but then, and so, you're like, I'm just gonna let you see it. I'm oh, gonna let sure. you have it. For right? sure. You gotta see it. We have to feel it. <laughs> so this Caleb. Yeah. Uh have you boxed? Done boxing, went around with him before. Yeah, yeah. Is this is this a history? Yeah, so you yeah, got some history. history with I got him. a little brief history. Okay. So I fought him when I was an amateur. Okay. Back in Golden Gloves. And back time when I fought him, back then I only had like maybe 13, 14 amateur fights at the time. He was already a 2012 Olympic alternate. He was already a 2011 national champion. So he had Ooh. all these accolades. He was like the 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 poster child, right? Yeah. I went in there and put these hands on him. I only had 13 fights at the time. It was competitive. They gave him a decision. I definitely, and he definitely knew he was in a fight that night. And so, at fast forward after that, we kind of, I, I don't want to say kind of had to like look beef, but my whole life had been about getting my lid back. And so once he got, once he won, I always wanted my lid back against mm-hmm. him always. And now it's the perfect time. Yeah. He's 22 and two. I'm 18 and two. He's oh, looking, perfect. He's he looking for an opponent. I'm available. You have gun with travel. Like, pull up on me. I'll be your Huckleberry. Yeah. So, I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be your Huckleberry. So, I'm always talking shit. It's like, you put it out there. Yeah. I'm ready to fight. Yeah. Let's go get it. Well, and um, it's kind of cool to see the evolution of. So, Lucas, if you don't know, Golden Gloves and Amateur, like, I mean, that's, that's your window. That's your gateway. You're young. You're right. fresh. So, y'all have both evolved in the sport oh, and yeah. y'all are older exactly you know more you mature, have more mature, mature experience yeah. more things under your belt oh, yeah. that would just be that would be fun yeah, to see mm-hmm. and the just the evolution of the of sports itself yes. or just even athletes itself like you said that window and then you kind of get get to really see what putting hard work in oh, yeah. diligently yes. looks like Over years because because <laughs> think about it like you have both Grown up, yep. you both got the aches and pains. Yep. You both put on the work. So, what's the only thing that's going to be a defining pack a factor? This then? will, these nuts. I'm going to put these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> the will. Okay, he's saying the will. I'm, I'm assuming it comes down to consistency oh, sure. and diligence within, yeah. like behind the scenes, what you're doing. That's for sure. Ultimately, now, that might be the only thing that. Would be a deciding factor. So, I'm t- so I'll talk shit to Caleb Plant, but he is definitely a great boxer. And he definitely put the work in, too. Like, he stays in shape. Are you know in the gym? Are you like I do? Like, yeah. that's just part of it. And so he takes his job very seriously. So with him, it's not a hate. It's not me. I don't like you. But I don't know if I like him. But it goes back to I'm better than you. Yeah. And I'm going to show you I'm better than you. Yeah. And so it really is on him. If he take the fire, you're going to see it. Of course, he thinks he's better than me. So I'm like, oh, show me. You know, I'm like, Missouri, I'm going to show you. You got to have that mentality. Yeah, right? exactly. Like, if you you know, don't, you're going to get beat. That's what Dan showed. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And so, and, that's mm-hmm. it. so what you just said, Lucas, is, is gold because my first showtime fight in Las Vegas on Floyd May was on the car. Well, he put a card on. Mm-hmm. I ended up getting canceled. But before that, like three weeks before the fight, I had an interview with Arkansas and Democrat Gazette, I think. And the guy, he just could not understand where I got my confidence from. He asked me, he was like, so what's going to happen, you know, in two weeks when you fight? I said, I'm going to knock his ass out. He was like, but how do you know? I said, because I know. He was like, no, but like, how do you know? He was looking for this one answer mm-hmm. before he can go like, oh, okay, I got it now. I'm going to use something yeah. there too. Yeah. No, it's just, I know I put the work in. Right. I know I'm busting my ass. I know I'm supposed to be here. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at shit like, what do you want? One of two things going to happen. Either I'm going to put my hands on you, or you're going to put your hands on me. 
Right. As simple as that. Mm-hmm. I know what I'm putting work in for. So I know what I'm coming to do. But that's to that, that's not enough for some people. Some people want to know. But how, like, how do you know? Like, right. is there like a well, secret pill you say? Most like, people don't have that conviction, right? That's like, you've got mm-hmm. the conviction behind it, and you already have the vision of winning. Yeah. Right? Exactly. So, like, why wouldn't you go do it? But then, <laughs> and people can do that. They can use that mentality. Anything they do, because yeah. most people are getting up. They're not boxing somebody in the ring. They're boxing themselves. Amen to that. Look at that. Oh, that is so true. It's about me. Inner demons. That's not too right. Minds. Well, is that, is that mind readiness, right? <laughs> that we talk about, like getting in a state where you're speaking things into existence, exactly. you know? And it's funny with like a brand new yeah. uh, pro runner that I have, she'll be like, Oh, I got an event this week, and um, yeah, we'll see how I do. I'm like, Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't talk like that. Yeah, wow. And it is so cool to see her that, you know, she, she was like, Oh, I'll, I'll go to. Um, I'll go to LA in the next four years for the Olympics, but I, I won't make Paris. I mean, I'm just a new pro runner. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, yeah, why, why would you cut hey, yourself short? Why would you sell it short? Guess what? Uh, she's already in the running to qualify. Like she, her <laughs> ranking. I'm like, girl, like yeah, yeah. the season hasn't ever really started for you and look where you're at. And so it's so cool. Now she walks in. And she's like, oh, so I got an event this weekend. And yeah, I'm going to be running this kind of PR and I'm going to sparkle. Like that's, 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 the, what, that's what you need. If you need that, mm-hmm. is the confidence. You can be humble. Right. You can be confident too, though. Of course, mm-hmm. cockiness and confidence is a thing lies. I'm not saying be cocky. But all your shit. If you put the work in and you did all the sacrifice you need to do to make it happen, why wouldn't you own that shit? Yeah. I got a buddy right now. He's my stable mate. He's, he's 20 and 1 with 18 knockouts of pressure boxer. And he's still struggling with confidence. So I always hear some kids, what we gonna do this weekend? Oh, I'm gonna try my best. I said his name. I'm oh gonna try to say his name. <laughs> he said, I'm gonna try my best. I'm like, no, you ask me, you ask me what we do this weekend. I'm knocking your shit loose. Yeah. <laughs> I, do. Yeah. Right. I know I put the running in, and the loneliest, the most loneliest part when you about to fight is right before you about to walk out. Cause then everything you cheated on and trying to count, every every mile you skipped, every coming. minute you shit, it's all coming here. Yeah. Cause you start thinking like, wait a minute, this guy trained for me. Just while I train for him. Yeah. Oh, shit, he had eight weeks to prep for me. Nobody else to prep for me. Oh, shit, I shouldn't write that extra mile. I shouldn't have did. No. So that's why I make sure doing training camp, I don't leave no stones left on time. Well, see, and that's the thing is that it, the confidence isn't just the fight, right? The confidence is every Everything. little piece mm-hmm. building up to the fight. It's saying, you know what? No, I'm not going to think about working out. I'm going to yeah, go do I'm it right do now. I got, I got 10 miles to run. I'm going to go run 10 miles right now. Like that. You, it, we talked on a previous podcast about like what prioritizing is, and mm-hmm. it's just pre making the decisions. Oh, for sure. And so, if you can pre make the decisions, you will build the confidence. So, for the person who's like, can't go, they, they can live in the busy life that everybody's living, right? And yeah. they're like, oh, I need to go work out, or I'm not going to work out this, this week, you know, just be like confident. I'm going to put my shoes on. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put my training shoes on. Right. Okay. Well, I'll put my training shoes on. I'm a, I'm going to get the car. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to have confidence to go get in the car, go to the yeah, gym. Yes. And then they get to the gym. Now I got to sit there and be like, I got to I gotta be confident. I just got to go work out. All right. Yeah, and then it, it feeds back on itself. You've done it once. Okay, cool. Do this why show. wouldn't you be mm-hmm. able to lose 10 pounds? Or why yeah. wouldn't you be able to go step yeah. in a ring and, and fight? <laughs> right? Like, and you build show. on that. That's how you build confidence. That's real. And that's how you know that you can be, that's beat how them. That's know. In right? preparation, yeah. you got to know. You got to know it. If I, if I have any excuse to not want to work out, do I got a wife and five kids? Um, That's an excuse. Yeah, I wake up That's tired every fucking day. Excuse. I wake up tired every day. <laughs> every day I'm tired. You know what I mean, when I still put my shoes on, mm-hmm. still put my gloves on every day and make that choice, I'm gonna make this shit happen. Tell People say, it, "Well, you get paid for it." Yeah, but if you uh, as a boxer, if you're not fighting. I'm not getting paid. You ain't. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't always mm-hmm. get paid either. Exactly. I'm sure you went through. Yeah, when I was an amateur, yeah. yeah. When you fight, when you fight mm-hmm. good gloves, you don't get paid as an amateur. Yeah. Right. But it's all longevity. It's about knowing long term goals. And just, I got to do this right now, get where I want to be later. So I got to ask for you and like mm-hmm. wrap up and everything. How'd you get the name Hot Sauce? Oh, yeah. That's a million dollar question. <laughs> right there. And I always wish I had this cool story, but really, I just put hot sauce on everything, man. Ever since I was like <laughs> in high school, man. It got so bad that I would carry, carry my. All individual hot sauce bottle in my pocket at lunch, bust it out, <laughs> put it up. Now I just transfer it to me. I make it hot in the rain, though. Yeah. In the rain, it's going to get really hot. I feel like you need to get your own <laughs> brand of hot sauce. Like, I watch hot ones. I got one. Yeah, I do watch hot ones. Yeah, I do have a whole bottle of hot sauce, too, man. You got to try that. You like hot sauce? You do. You I love yeah, hot sauce. I love hot sauce. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially it's the right best right hot sauce so. on this side of Mississippi River. I'm guaranteed. <laughs> I'm not biased. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we, that's man. what we need. We need some bottles of hot sauce. <laughs> I'm talking about. So, where can everybody find you? 
to see your training, your next fight. You and I know trainer, right? I'm also that a trainer too. Yeah, straight red boxing and fitness. So I'm there almost every day teaching classes and teaching clients how to box and sweet sign. You literally have to want to compete when come to the gym. You got people all the time that want to learn how to how to throw their hands or lose weight or gain weight or live mm-hmm. or whatever. So we got yeah. whatever your fitness goals is, we can make it happen. You can find me on Instagram at Calvin with the K K A L V I N Henderson. On Twitter at Sauce Henderson. And then on Facebook is Calvin with the K Hot Sauce Henderson. Right on. And you got the is the fight scheduled, the fight you're looking for? You waiting for him oh, to uh, I'm hit you back. Shit until he said, Yeah, man. So he's looking at it, man. Like you know on Instagram, you can see he's looking at your story mm-hmm. and stuff. I'm he's screenshotting that shit. So you watching? I mean the P come on. That's so, right. so he Hell sees yeah. it. Yeah, he sees it all different. He said, We know man. So once you get to the top of your sport, everybody I know Canelo people. Everybody knows everybody. Right. And it's just really on him you want to fight him, man. Right on, man. Yeah. Awesome. Well, go, well, go check out his Instagram. Make sure everybody supports that post. Pull up on me. I was going to Put like, some pressure on Put some yeah. pressure yeah. on Caleb. Like, his like his hopefully <laughs> this can be, you know, a little bit of a, an encouragement. That's what Dan And or at least just be able to follow you. And if you're local, guys, go check out Straight Right. Like he was saying. No, no, I mean, no. they even have for a class for Parkinson's. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I think mean, I'm gonna everything go one-on-one. He's on ready. I'm ready. Get your body. Let's get it. It will make it happen. We have free intro classes every Saturday, 9.30 a.m. You don't have to pay anything. We well, got baby rounds, but as far as the class, class is free. Come in there, we'll teach you the fundamentals of boxing and get you going. Awesome. awesome. Thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate guys. you. Appreciate it. As always. Till next time.